Christmas. So we have a procession this morning. Or, uh, stand and face the back as we come back. Hard to hear a to sing.
Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of Our Lord is from Isaiah, uh, sorry, wrong page. Uh, still Isaiah, but Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchman, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And choir members, please stand and we will sing to graduate. <laughs>
Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. And please remain standing as we confess our faith and sing this morning. Hymn 953, we all believe in one true God. city, shouting together with joyful voices, and from that city the word spread to all nations. With that in mind, please hearken to a translation of our text from Isaiah uh, 52. This translation is a bit more literal than the English Standard Version that we heard read just a, minute, a few minutes ago, but it's the same thing. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a herald announcing peace 
preaching good news, announcing salvation, saying to Zion, your God has become king. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they shout for joy, for with both eyes they will see when Yahweh returns to Zion. Burst forth, shout for joy together, O ruins of Jerusalem, because Yahweh is comforting his people. He is redeeming Jerusalem. Yahweh is laying bare his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. The news this herald delivers is peace and salvation, comfort and redemption. But those are only news in a context of conflict and danger, of trouble and loss. No herald would need to run to report on the status quo if all were well. So why is the herald breathlessly running to deliver his message? Did you notice that the city is a pile of rubble? Jerusalem is in ruins. Enemies did this. The citizens of Zion watched God leaving them. If God had been for them, who could have done this against them? But he will be back, and soon. So is all well with you and yours this morning? At Christmas time, we tend to expect that all must be well, or at least appear to be so. We search for the perfect gift for our loved ones. We panic if the food is not prepared just so. We must have all our favorite songs and hymns. We demand that the seasonal decorating look like a professional did it. We want our family photos to show only smiles and good health to those who receive them. We may find it awkward, even out of place, to mention any difficulties or downtimes in our annual letters. We brush the tough topics aside, not mentioning religion or politics at Christmas dinner, if we're actually able to have Christmas dinner this year. But the fact is, all is not well with us. We work so hard to hide the fact that we are broken people. Since we are naturally born sinners, we also sin, so we are ruined on two counts. We may be able to fool some people sometimes. We may even deceive ourselves, but God is not fooled. He knows who we are and what we do. So he sends us heralds. Runners who bring good news from the battlefield to citizens living among the rubble. Those runners remind me of the original marathon race in ancient Greece, when a courier is reported to have carried news of a Greek victory over the Persians 26 miles plus to Athens before he collapsed and died. If we are honest, we must admit that there are parts of our lives that we have been unable to set right. All is not well with us. Fallen as we are, the image of God is still there, but it's ruined, it's broken. Our enemies, sin, death, the devil, our own sinful selves, still trouble us. So we urgently need some good news. We need to hear that help is on the way, that a victory has already been won. Which is why we've come here today, or some have tuned in to the recording. Only the ruined sinners, only the broken people, need to be fixed up and salvaged by the Lord. Only such folks will truly be able to appreciate the comfort and joy that God our King has come to bring. Who are the heralds God sends today? Well, seldom are they herald angels. Often they are others. Not winged messengers sent from heaven, but mere earthlings are called to deliver the word of the Lord. These men have a spring in their step from the good news they bring. They do not trudge along their dreary way with painful steps and slow. Paul quotes Isaiah in Romans 10, but he changes the wording a bit. He takes away Isaiah's reference to the mountains which surround Jerusalem, and he makes the singular herald into plural preachers. In both of those ways, Paul expands on Isaiah's original picture, widening it to the whole world. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, exclaims Paul. Have you seen my feet? Are they beautiful to you? 
I doubt that I could work as a foot model, but the beauty of my feet is not the kind a camera can capture. Just as the rev in front of my name is not because of who I am, but because of what I'm called to bring you, so the beauty of my feet is the same way. My feet are counted as good looking only because they carry me to you or help me to stand up in front of you with the news that God's kingdom has come closer, that the Lord reigns. Have you seen how he does this? How he brings his heavenly kingdom down to earth? Look into the manger and see. The mighty arm of the Lord, the one that will win the battle for us, lies here soft and tiny. You've heard about it as the herald ran to your ruined city, as the watchmen standing along what used to be the city wall lifted up their joyful voices, and as the citizens broke into joyful song together. You've heard about it, and that was exciting. Now you've seen it, and that's so much better. You've, uh, God is in the flesh. God, God's mighty arms are made soft and tiny. But how can this baby win the battle? How will he defeat our enemies and rebuild the ruins of our lives single-handedly, even as a grown man? It seems so unbelievable to us, yet we're ready to raise our voices as soon as he is born. This is the prince who was born to bring us peace in the midst of our struggles. So break forth, shout for joy together, O ruins of Jerusalem. Don't be shy about it. Your neighbors need to hear what you sing. You sing of the one whose birth is not only for us, but also for all the nations. The ends of the earth will see his salvation. Use your most joyful voices, even out in public places. Go, tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born. God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. So raise your joyful voices, not only for your own enjoyment, that's fun too, but also for the benefit of those around you, those who listen, even on the video, or wherever you go today, or in the coming days. Sing to the Lord, bless His name, tell of His salvation from day to day, declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works to all the peoples. Amen. We continue in prayer, and the prayers are printed in the bulletin. Please stand as we pray. Friends in Christ, I urge you to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and by all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit, according to your will, both in life and death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend especially Don, uh, the father of our principal, as he's still hospitalized after heart surgery, and all who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your, your Spirit to subdue our flesh, 
to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, just a quick announcement regarding offering envelopes. The printed announcement says uh, they're not here yet, but the FedEx man came yesterday, so they are here. One of our finance committee uh, helped uh, get them in the, your boxes and mailboxes out there, so if you remember on the way out of church, pick those up and take them along. And also for folks at home, if you happen to buy church in the next few weeks, uh, they're here. So please enjoy the music and prepare uh, for the second. Mm -hmm. Father, that we may give heed to the testament of your Son in true faith, and above all, firmly take to heart the words with which Christ gives to us his body and blood for our forgiveness. By your grace, lead us to remember and give thanks for the boundless love which he manifested to us when by pouring out his precious blood he saved us from your righteous wrath and from sin, death, and hell. Grant that we may receive the bread and wine that is his body and blood as a gift, guarantee, and pledge of his salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, at his command and with his own words, we receive his testimony. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Now sing, we now rejoice. 